In a recent discussion at a cooperators board meeting, we looked at all of the UN sustainable development goals, asking ourselves which ones were most relevant to us. We're a large insurance cooperative. We work in different areas. Not all of the SDGs are equally relevant. So we settled on nine. And one of those is gender equality. So then the question comes up, what, do, what does it mean for us? I'm very interested in seeing the organization start by adopting a gender equality policy. Now, in proposing any policy, one has to answer the question, what will be different if we have a policy in this area that won't happen without a policy? Very good question. We have a workforce made up mainly by women. There are certainly men in the workforce, but it, strong, there's a strong majority of women in our workforce. But as you look up the ranks, you see that women end up in the minority. So a majority of supervisors are women, but the CEO is a man, and a majority of people on the senior management team are men, and a majority of the vice presidents are men. So what do we need to do as an organization to change that over time? What about our board of directors, for example? We have a board of 22, six women out of 22. That's a ratio that has changed very little over time. We also can think about our goods and services, the things that we offer to our clients. Does gender come into the picture at all? I'll suggest that yes, it does. If we're concerned to meet unmet needs, and that's one of our goals as a cooperative, we're not just there to make money, we're there to provide something that people need, especially something that might otherwise not be there. Then if we think about single parents, for example, they tend to be women, mainly. If we think about who has and who doesn't have life insurance in Canada, probably a majority of single parent families, unless they have life insurance through work, don't have life insurance. They obviously need life insurance. So this would have implications for us. We could say we want to promote life insurance, affordable life insurance to this group of the population. So in my thinking, a gender equality policy would be an opportunity for us to set some goals, make some observations, set some goals, and then perhaps lay out some tactics for achieving those goals. I think that if we want to have more women, we have to have at least targets. So I'll take the case first of women in senior management. An organization, a cooperative, could have a policy that says it, it wants to achieve member, uh, not member, sorry, uh, gender parity. So it may then say, all right, we want to get there in some measured steps. So by such and such a date, we would hope that 25% of the people filling the roles at this level of management are women and so on. At what point should we be saying that 50% of our senior managers will be women? This, this is what I mean by targets, because then when you're conducting, conducting a hiring process, you may say, I really need to hire a woman this time around because we're trying to get to this target. The same could be done with boards of directors. Now, that always invites the question, targets or quotas? And usually people don't like the idea of quotas. They'll say, well, quotas work against getting the best person for the job, for instance. There is a kind of flip side to that. If our unaided process, processes now mean that the majority of directors and cooperatives and senior managers are men. And if we start from the premise that men and women are equal in their ability, and we want the best people in these positions, doesn't it follow that maybe we don't have the best people now if women are systematically underrepresented? To my mind, it means exactly 
that. Interestingly, Europe has started down the road of quotas for boards of directors. So quite a few European countries have established a minimum requirement, for example, of 30% of board seats being filled by women. And I learned quite recently that in France, where this is the case, this rule applies not just to publicly traded companies, which is what I had supposed and which is what had gathered the media attention, but to all companies. And so it affects cooperatives as well. We have three people from, four people from French cooperatives on the board of the ICA, as it happens, two are men and two are women. I was having a conversation with a handful of them, and I asked them, so how about the quotas? A lot of people didn't want quotas. How do you find it? And they said, it's great. It's good. We like it. And that echoed something that I had heard at a seminar I had attended, which was that now that quotas are in place in many European countries, people are, have found out that they, they work and they're not so hard to administer and they're happy with them. Studies have been done. I won't get this quite right, but they show that it will take something like 100 more years to reach parity in the boardroom if quotas are not adopted. Thank you.